My presentation uh, focuses bo uh, both on uh, uh, media and politics, and uh, and very in, in a very concrete sense, like how to engage them and how to use them for for uh, campaigning. So first, well, to uh, to understand how you can use the media, you have to understand what how, uh, the staples of journalism. Um, journalism uh, has uh, a function of providing information. And then you have these like uh, uh, typical goals of journalism, which uh, say like every journalistic uh, um, report should contain the answers to the questions what, when, where, who, and why. The five W's. This is what uh, journalists are uh, generally supposed to do. Uh, also, they are supposed to uh, in, uh, do equivocal reporting. That is what is called hoor and wederhoor in uh, in Dutch. So that. Uh, both sides, or every every side of a story, uh, should get represented in the report. Um, and finally, selling advertising space fitting their public. That means that uh, that every journalistic medium uh, will uh, write in such a way that the people uh, who they think or who they know uh, are the recipients of their media. Um, will read stuff that, uh, that also ties in well with the advertisements that they place on their media. So what, uh, what are they good for in a, in a campaigning context? You can use them to transport your message, because it's media, it's, uh, it, ha it reaches a lot more people than you could as an individual group uh, uh, reach. Um, you can use them to get feedback on your actions. If you do an action and you read something about it in the, in the paper or on the internet, you know how uh, the message of your action came across. This is, uh, this is something that, uh, that uh, people often uh, ignore, but it's very important. Um, you can keep informed about your position, because uh, I even if, uh, even if uh, you say nothing, uh, the media will say something about, your, uh, uh, about what you did. And let's say you have a riot in the streets and there is absolutely no press statement, uh, there will be a police officer or, uh, or uh, somebody of the, of the state authority who will say uh, in the media what they think about that. And you should, uh, you should check that out and, uh, and follow it. And finally, in the direct action context, they, be they can be used as a sort of watchdog. Because if you, if you have media uh, representatives there, on the scene, uh, the, the police or state authority, they, will, they know that whatever they do and say at this particular moment will immediately be taken up by the media and they will want to make sure that they look good. <coughs> so how do you use those guys for your campaign? You can catch them on their requirement to re report concisely. Because uh, in, in that, what that means is uh, you, when, they, uh, when you see that they are ignoring the, the uh, five W's, the what, when, where, who and why, um, you can, you can uh, grab on this and you can, uh, you can call them back and say like, hey, wait a second, you, you missed something in your story that you should, uh, should be having in there. Uh, you can also catch them on the requirement to provide equivocal reporting in the same, of, with the same method. Actually, I've seen people doing that quite uh, successfully. What you, uh, what you have to make sure is that your news is interesting for the readers. So, uh, so if you are if you're doing an action and uh, and you want to uh, transport some transport something, uh, don't write like uh, political manifestos uh, uh, that are ten pages long where you use a lot of uh, internal internal jargon or where you repeat uh, stuff that has been said twenty fifty thousand times over and that people are not believing anymore. People want to read something uh, in the media that uh, that they find engaging. And finally, uh, provide as much information as you can in the shortest possible way. That is, uh, that is what is very important if you make press statements. So that, uh, that you do, uh, because you have to think of the, of the fact that, uh, that usually they, they, will, they will not give you like, uh, like a whole magazine page or something. Except if it's a monthly magazine that does that kind of stuff. But, uh, but they will want to make a short item and you have to... Uh, Put your information that you want to uh, get across, you have to put it in such a way that they can very easily integrate it in, in their paper. And in the, in the most ideal case, they will actually take it uh, more or less 100%. How do you get those guys to do what you want them to do? 
you sell them your story up front. Uh, when, I'm, when, uh, when I mean sell, I don't mean in a commercial sense, but, uh, but when you make, uh, when you, but uh, before you do your action, um, before you do a step in your campaign, you actually make it clear to uh, representatives of the media that they will have to be interested in it because it's going to be really cool. And they will, uh, 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 and the people uh, who read their paper or look at their webpage or watch their news uh, program, they will really like it. And you have to make that uh, clear to them before you start. You don't tell them, of course, exactly what you're going to do. You just make it, uh, make it quite clear to them that it's going to be something they want to have. Um, you prepare a draft press statement before your action. That's not something that, uh, that, that you send out immediately. It's something that like, okay, in the general lines, this is kind of like the story that we want to tell. And you have it already ready before you do your action. During your action, things will change. So uh, you will have to change this draft statement, so keep it as general as possible. And release a full statement immediately after where you then uh, uh, change the, the draft statement that you have in such a way that, uh, that it reflects what actually happened. And uh, if you had the draft statement before, it will take like 15, 20 minutes and you can have your press statement out uh, exactly like you wanted to. Also, you should have at least one media spokesperson ready for, for, uh, for media people. That should, be, that should be someone uh, who is uh, confident and uh, who wants to talk to them uh, and not choose someone who, uh, who does not want to have his job or who, do, who does not feel confident uh, doing it. But uh, the importance of having a spokesperson is that, uh, that you prevent them from running around uh, outside of your control and, uh, and asking like, uh, like some drunken guy uh, who just happens to also be there on the street and uh, they think that's, that's like someone who is in this action uh, but is not or maybe isn't, <laughs> you don't want that uh, to be something that is uh, transported. You make sure that, uh, that, uh, that you uh, lead those guys around on a, on a leash uh, or actually like not so much a leash but like with a carrot and a donkey that you lead them around and, uh, and, and basically guide them through your actions so that, uh, that they see what you want them to see. Set clear appointments and conditions. You tell, uh, you tell them where you meet them, where you are going to go with them, what they can do and what they cannot do. So that they know in advance and that they don't try to get stupid ideas afterwards. If you do not do that in advance, uh, those people will be running all kinds of directions and, uh, and will become unguided and uh, probably you lose control over them and then whatever you want to get across this message might not come across like you wanted to. Always know what your main points are and repeat them to them. Very often uh, people get interviewed and uh, they do a really good interview uh, but of course there is never going to be like 100% of what they say in the interview is going to be in a media item or in, a, or in, a, uh, um, or in an article. So you want to make sure that, uh, that important things are really like hammered into the mind of the journalist that you are talking to. <laughs> Not in the sense that, uh, that you're repeating everything and, and don't say anything new, but, uh, but you always come back to the point that is important. So like a few examples of, uh, of uh, uh, local media I've put up here. You all know them, so I don't have to tell anything about them. Um, the importance of like uh, what what I wanted to say like with with this like local media and national media is uh, is basically the local media are easier to reach and easier to sell to because uh, because they they uh, they don't have that much great stuff uh, that moves the whole country to uh, report on and uh, and they always are uh, and and they are closer to the ground so they are easier uh, they are easier to be interested in in your. Uh, general story. Parole is uh, generally a good uh, uh, thing to use for Amsterdam because they are focused on Amsterdam but they are also read outside of the city a lot. They so, <laughs> well, they, they, have, you know, they, have a, they have a decent uh, uh, national uh, sales uh, uh, amount. I mean, not as much as other papers, but, but, uh, but they do. <coughs> uh, here's some national media. <laughs> And I've put a few examples in there that uh, that are um, that are not really something that you would use directly. The energy handles blots is uh, yeah. I put them there because like if you can place if you can get an article into the energy handles plot, 
then you know that you did something uh, really good. Uh, I, you did something that is significant because the NRC Handelsblatt is not a, a sensational newspaper. That's a, it's more or less a newspaper for people who are opinion leaders and opinion makers. And uh, and uh, if uh, if you manage to get uh, your message across in there, then then you have something that is substantial. That's what you can generally mm, uh, assume. NOS Journal, uh, really good because a lot of people watch it. Uh, Volkskrant uh, is uh, yeah, kind of like, uh, you, you know, everybody knows the Volkskrant, uh, so I don't really need to say what, uh, what's interesting about uh, that. <laughs> The Trau is, uh, yeah, what, what goes for the NSA also kind of goes for the Trau, but, in, uh, but not, not quite as much. Uh, more in the sense like uh, if you have substantial, in, um, uh, substantial content, then the Trau might, uh, might take it. But they are, they are actually not so important. I put the Telegraph and Geen style here, <laughs> mostly for the, for the feedback on your action function. Because the Telegraph and Geen style, they will uh, take every opportunity to break your action apart. Uh, and if you realize that uh, they did not manage to, then you realize that you must have done something good as well. Because if those guys are not, uh, are not uh, writing about the fact that uh, you are a bunch of uh, uh, dirty, unwashed uh, uh, um, uh, parasites, um, then, uh, then this is a feedback indicator that, uh, that you actually uh, did an action that uh, has a really broad uh, uh, impact uh, for, for like the common people. Um, okay. <laughs> <laughs> Politics. <laughs> <laughs>